we just finished canning 84 pints of plum jelly and we got it all done before about three in the afternoon. take you along on a really busy preserving day. We've got lots of people, lots of fun in the kitchen, but I'm gonna show you all about my absolute favorite tool that I use for speeding along processing days so we can get done quickly, get the kitchen cleaned up, and get on to putting our feet up at the end of a big canning day. That is nine gallons of plum juice with two more just starting. That's a lot of jam. This is my secret weapon for getting a ton done on a big fruit processing day. And these are, oh, look, you can see that one's just starting to work. These are steam juicers. So it used to be that when we would make jam, we would have to hand cut every single plum, get every single pit out, blend it up, and get it into the jam pot. But now, instead of doing that, look at this. We can just put whole plums right on into the steam juicer. And then they juice for about an hour, hour 15 minutes, and all of that beautiful juice comes right out. Now, it does mean that we're making jelly instead of a jam, but it's still absolutely delicious. And this has actually saved us probably two days worth of work. We can usually get all the plums done in one day now instead of having it be a three-day process. So this is, in my opinion, an amazing machine. I absolutely love it. You just put water down here in the very bottom chamber and then this is empty. It collects the juice and the water goes up and it steams the fruit that's in the steamer basket at the top. And then you can see all that juice when it starts collecting comes down this little hose and right down into whatever jar you have. Now, we have it just set up on a couple of buckets so that it's up high enough. You can see by the floor, we've been doing a lot of uh, juice already. This is probably the last batch we'll do before we start actually doing all of the jellies. So the setup on a big canning or food preserving day is one of the most important things that you can do. Getting yourself ready for it is kind of the difference between success and a big sticky mess of a kitchen that you don't feel like cleaning up and you're frustrated at the end of the day. So before we ever start a really big processing day, there's a few things that we like to do. One, we make sure our jars are all ready. This is about 48 pint jars. We actually ran out of pint jars this year. Can you believe it? We needed more. I think we're gonna have more jam or more jelly today than can fill this. So we're actually, somebody just ran to our local hardware store to go get more pint jars. I always thought I had enough, but you never have enough jars. It's not really a thing. The other thing we wanna do is start with a clean kitchen. So right now, before we get started, we are clearing the decks, we're wiping down all the counters, making sure everything's clean and we have every available inch of surface space and working space. The last thing that I really, really find important get your meals in your instant pot right there. Can you see it? <laughs> or your crock pot or something because you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be sticky, you're gonna be very proud of all your great jams and jellies, but you can't eat jams and jelly for dinner. So you need to make sure you have something ready to go for lunch and for dinner so that you get a break at the end of the day and all you have to do is focus on cleaning up the kitchen and <laughs> enjoying your beautiful jars of finished product. Equally as important as your prep work is your setup in the kitchen. And if you have multiple people working with you, it's really important to set up a good flow where the day can just keep moving and one thing doesn't trip over the next. Today, I happen to have a house full 
of lovely young ladies who are wanting to learn how to do big batch canning days. So I have a lot of help. Let's look at the setup that I have for right now. So over here on the peninsula, I have my ingredient setup. We have a bowl for all the dry ingredients. We have our big measuring cup for our liquid ingredients. And then because we'll be doing a gallon of juice at a time, we're just gonna use this as our measuring for our juice. We're using Pomona's pectin today, which means that we also need to use the calcium water. So we have a big thing of calcium water made up right here. That just comes with the Pomona's pectin. I really like the Pomona's. I use it whenever I'm doing uh, jams and jellies and pretty much anything like this because I can do much lower sugar. I can really control the sugar content on it. Anyway, somebody's gonna stand over here and fill up one batch of all the ingredients that we need. Somebody's gonna stand right over here. I have citric acid, I'm a little low on lemon juice, so I'm gonna substitute citric acid out for some of this. Once that's done, that's gonna come over here to the stove. Now, right now we still have the juicers running, but we're about to switch the juicers out, the steam juicers, and put the stock pots on instead. Another thing I really like about Pomona's pectin is that you can multiply the batch. So we're gonna be doing four X batches in each of the stock pots in two stations. So this is gonna be a lot of jelly. This is a really big active day. And you could definitely just do one station. You could cut this in a quarter. You could do way less. I have my stock pot ready to go. And I have another one down there all ready to go with its spoon. And those will just move into place on the stove. The jams will get made right here in this location. Once they're made, they're gonna come over to the island where we're all set up for filling our jars. Now, I know we've been taught that jars have to be hot. The big deal with jars is that they have to not be cold because of the thermal shock. These jars are all very clean. They're ready to go. So the heat has very little to do with anything besides the fact that we don't want thermal shock. The kitchen today is warm. My jars are not cold to the touch. So I'm not gonna worry about preheating the jars. They're gonna be just fine. I have my lids out. I get my lids from Lehman's in bulk. I really like them. I've never had a problem with seals or with failures. I got my bands over there ready to go for the first few batches. Funnels out ready to go, ladles and jar lifters. Those are gonna come over here to the canning station. I've got the electric canner going. I also have my little electric burner going with another water bath canner. And then just because our four times batch is likely to give us more jars than we can fit into each of these canners. I actually have a third canner going as backup on the stove. So that's a pretty advanced system. Don't get too intimidated by the fact that we're doing such a big batch. I feed at least 13 people at every single meal. So for us, it takes two pints of jar for everybody to have a piece of toast for breakfast in the morning with jam on it and we like to do other baking with jam throughout the year. The other thing we're gonna do today is we're also gonna be making fruit rolls out of the jam. And if you guys have watched my fruit roll video, we'll link it here so that you can find it and get a much less chaotic version of it than us doing everything all at once. But essentially we take, we make a low sugar jelly or jam and we spread it out on the dehydrator trays and dry them like that. And so since we're right in process of doing that, we're just gonna do that today and get the dehydrator filled. Lots going on. We're just waiting for these last steam juicers to wrap up and then we're gonna get going. Okay, remember how full those plums were? So much meat in them after we've steam juiced them all the way, they get down to just a little bit of pulp. There's not even enough here to run through the food mill. We've tried it before and really what we end up with is we have pits and stems and skins. So this is gonna be a wonderful treat for the pigs and for the chickens. It could also go in the compost pile just fine. When you're working in this station, you are going to be filling the ingredients all up. You'll be the ingredient person. So the first ingredient we need is a full gallon of juice, which 
You can see some of these aren't all the way full, so we'll have to just ladle them from some of the others or fill them so that we have a full gallon right to the bottom of the lip right here is where the gallon mark is. The step number two is that we're gonna use a cup of lemon juice. It has to be the standardized lemon juice. It can't be fresh lemon juice, and this is so that you are reliably adjusting your acid. That's the important part for this. When we run out of the lemon juice, we'll switch to the citric acid. And for this, we're using the gallon of juice, gallon of the plum juice. We're gonna use a cup of lemon juice or four teaspoons of citric acid. So we'll just measure this out right to a cup. And then into the lemon juice, we're gonna put our calcium water. Pomona's pectin does not use sugar to activate the pectin or the gelling feature. It uses calcium. That's why we can do low sugar jams and jellies for that. We're gonna add five tablespoons plus one teaspoon for this jelly batch. We have all of our liquid ingredients ready to go and these are gonna go in the pot first. Now we need to get our dry ingredients ready and that's gonna be our sugar. We're gonna be using eight cups of sugar for this. And eight cups of sugar sounds like a lot, but this is gonna make probably 12 pints of jam. So this is really gonna be spread out. And then I'm gonna need to add my pectin. Quarter cup of pectin for this size batch. And the important thing with adding the pectin is that we need to get it mixed into the sugar because you don't want it to clump. And it will definitely clump if you don't have it mixed in. You don't want to over mix it though because it's way finer than the sugar. So it has a tendency to go all the way down to the bottom of the bowl and then clump there. So you just want to mix that all the way in. If you're over in this department and you're working here, these are your steps here. And you're going to get one setup, one batch, over to one of the people who's on the jam setup. So let's go over there and see what we do there. We're gonna get our plum juice right on in there. And we're gonna stir in our lemon juice mixture with the calcium water. Turn that on to a medium to medium high heat, and just give it a stir. What we wanna do right now is we're gonna bring it all the way up to a boil. You don't have to stir it the whole time, just to stir here and there is fine. Plum jam, or jelly, is kind of our staple because we use it for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, everything, because we get so much all at once. It's mm -hmm. like, that's, that's kind of the standard. Mm -hmm. And then we have the other ones for extra goodies on Sunday mornings or something like that. We have a definitely full rolling boil here. It is really boiling. It's starting to foam up, that's okay. We have an extra big pot. We are gonna turn the heat down though at this point. And then as we go to put the sugar mixture in, the foam is gonna boil down. It's kind of hard to do if you have a second set of hands it's really helpful but you do want to just shake it in a little at a time because you don't want it to clump so you want to stir pretty vigorously while pouring your sugar mixture in I'm pouring it in a little fast here so we're getting a little bit of clumping off the top that should break up as it goes And we want to stir vigorously until it comes back up to a full boil, rolling boil. And then at this point, the other ingredient team can be loading up the next set of ingredients for everybody is what will happen there because this does not take long once you get to this. And once the boil goes down, you can turn the heat back up again. If you put the sugar in and bring it back up to a boil, you have to bring it back up to a boil. And you boil it for like 15 minutes? No, you just, you just have to bring it to a boil. Okay, as soon as we get back up to that full boil, we can turn off the heat and get it over to our prepared jars. We're going to fill those up. 
when we are filling up jams or jellies, we want to fill them all the way almost to the very top. We only want a quarter inch head space. So that means you're gonna go right to the bottom of that top thread, right there where the thread starts. Just go there. So you want a very, very small head space when it comes to jams and jellies. Okay, and this is where it's really nice to have two people because we can hand this off now to the next person who can wipe and cap. And when we wipe, is that, is that this one? So we need a nice clean cloth here. We're just gonna wipe off the very top. Make sure there's no sticky parts to it. And we're gonna take a brand new flat, put that on, put our finger right down in the middle, depress it, and screw this on and then give it a nice little finger tight tug. This is ready now immediately to go into the canner that's already up to a simmer or to steaming really well. So I'm gonna put this one right in. is that before you start a new batch, you do want to wash all of the jam and all the pectin out of this stock pot. You don't have to give it a really good scrub with soap or anything like that, but definitely give it a good uh, rinse out so that you don't have more pectin mm -hmm. sitting in here because that'll start to thicken your new batch before you're ready for it. the jars now into the canner and they are ready to go. We actually had to put one into the next canner and we turn the heat up high. We're going to watch for it to come to a full rolling boil and then we're going to start the timer for where we're at because we have to adjust for elevation for 15 minutes. If you're below 1,000 oh, foot elevation then you can just can that for 10 minutes at a rolling boil. As soon as that 10 minutes is up, or that 15 minutes is up, if you live up at 2,500 feet like me, then you're gonna turn the canner off, take the lid off, and let it all sit for five minutes, and then you can get it out on your counter to cool the rest of the way. That is 84 pints of plum jelly. It's only about, I don't know, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And look at all of this jelly. We didn't finish all of the plums. We still have a couple more bushels. So we're gonna be doing it again tomorrow. But can you imagine all of this jelly all in one day? Now, remember, whenever you have a big kitchen day, your number one thing is get your kitchen clean afterwards. Go ahead and mop the floor. Don't worry, because you have dinner in the crock pot. Remember, we talked about that. So you're gonna get to put your feet up after all at the end. 
but get it all the way cleaned up. That way tomorrow morning when you come into your kitchen, this is what you have to look at and not a huge sticky mess. You guys, jump in, make sure you put some food up this year. And hey, check out this video if you're interested in more canning projects.